Why does everyone get so hung up about having to take a drug test? If you're not on vitamin B pills or sleep aids or ibuprofen or had a poppy seed muffin, you have nothing to hide. What's up, science junkies? Julian here for DNews. If you're applying for certain jobs or life insurance, you may have to take a drug test. In some states here in the US, applicants for government assistance have to pass a drug test as well. That's a bit of a controversial topic, but regardless of where you stand on it, you probably agree that someone who isn't using illegal drugs shouldn't be denied a job or insurance or aid just because the test they took resulted in a false positive. So these drug tests have better be pretty foolproof, right? Well, they may not be up to snuff. It's estimated they produce false positives in five to 10% of cases. Judy Stone of Scientific American estimated that taking into account normal drug use rates, about nine out of every 1,000 people will test positive for a drug they have not taken. Part of the reason these tests sound a false alarm is because the list of things that sets them off is surprisingly long. The painkiller ibuprofen can cause a test to show positive for marijuana, barbiturates, or benzodiazepines. Cold remedies, hay fever remedies, diet pills, and nasal decongestants can show up as amphetamines. And if you like to unwind with a poppy seed muffin and a gin and tonic, the poppies or quinine in the tonic water can both trip the alarm for opiates. And of course, eating foods with hemp seeds or taking vitamin B supplements derived from hemp seed oil can have trace amounts of THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. There are many varieties of drug tests and they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Ideally, they strike a balance between accuracy, cost, and invasiveness. Like a blood test is the most accurate, but a lot of people have a problem with needles. Hair tests aren't as invasive, but they can be expensive depending on how many substances they're looking for. And some shampoos can throw off the scent. By far, the most common method uses urine samples. The tests use immunoassays, which are biochemicals that bond to specific macromolecules and give off an indicator reaction. They're pretty accurate, but not perfect. So positive results often undergo a second test. A gas chromatography slash mass spectrometry test analyzes another urine sample, usually taken from the original. The sample is pushed through a tubular column by helium gas, and certain drugs pass through it at certain known speeds. Once it gets to the end of the column, it's fragmented with ionization and the fragments are sorted by mass. Again, certain drugs have specific and known fragmentation patterns. So these two tests together can give scientists a pretty solid idea of exactly what chemicals are present. The test is more expensive, but the positive results are rarely wrong. Not all drug tests are designed to see if someone has been using. Some are designed to test if an object has been in contact with illicit substances or if something is a drug itself. Law enforcement uses these when investigating drug dealers, but they aren't perfect either. In 2003, a college freshman flying home for the holidays was stopped in a Philadelphia airport because she had condoms filled with white powder in her bag. She claimed it was flour, a gag gift from girlfriends, and that she squeezed them for stress relief. But sadly, when the white powder was tested, it didn't vindicate her, coming up positive for opium and cocaine. She spent three weeks in jail and could have gone to prison for 20 years had more accurate tests not cleared her name. I'm sure she realizes her mistake now, but for all of you out there, let me just reiterate, do not bring white powder in condoms through airports. It looks a little suspicious. So certain innocuous drugs can trip a drug test, but that's not the only risk. For why mixing certain drugs can make you dead, you can turn to Trace over here. Doctors need to keep a watchful eye on what medications each of us are taking, because sometimes when drugs mix inside of our bodies, the results are dangerous or deadly. Do you think the margin of error is good enough, or just one innocent person losing their job is unacceptable? You can have your say down in the comments or on Twitter with the hashtag AskDNews. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.